Uh, my name is Jeremy Messersmith, and um, I have a new record out called Heart Murmurs. One more night in Omaha, bus stop just before the dawn. Cold oh, I sing in I sing in uh, in church a lot growing up, um, and then uh, and then I got a you know I eventually got a Walkman, and then um, the only radio station really in my hometown that I, I could get or was allowed to listen to was uh, was an oldie station. So I just grew up singing to lots of. Classics, and I think that's kind of where I, you know, I'm a sucker for for strong melodies. And I think I learned a lot of that from uh, from simply that. I didn't start off playing guitar. I had kind of a bout with it when I was 11. My dad had a guitar in the closet. He had an Alvarez 12 string, and I remember pulling it out and kind of like, this is cool. And then uh, it was out of tune, but I didn't know how to tune it, so I just kind of you know started cranking on the. Uh, tuning pegs until I broke a string and then put, quickly put it back before I got caught breaking Coming strings. Um, but I played, I played trumpet through, um, through junior high and um, had a promising trumpeting career until I got braces and then uh, that was kind of the end of it and uh, I took up, uh, took up guitar shortly, uh, shortly after. Broke my heart with sticks and stones Swore I'm never coming home Heart Murmurs was recorded with actually a pretty small number of people. So mainly uh, Andy Thompson plays drums, my producer, longtime uh, collaborator. Um, and I had uh, Brian Ty play some electric guitar on it. He's, a, he's kind of a well-known Minneapolis musician. Uh, plays in a band called the Starfolk, but he was in a band called the Hangups uh, a while back, and they're fantastic. Um, I had my friend, uh, one of my friends from college, uh, who's kind of a, a masterful cellist and bass player, do all the low end stuff on, on the record. Um, I played mostly guitars and a little piano and sang. Um, then uh, probably the secret weapon is actually the Laurel String Quartet, which is a Minneapolis based string quartet that does a bunch of recording. And, and um, I tour with them occasionally when, when, when I can get them. So my, my touring band is uh, comprised of mostly those folks. Uh, um, so it'll be a, a five-piece band for, uh, for most of the tour days. It feels like I'm kind of like in the center of the cyclone, so it doesn't really, it seems like every other day for me, but I can see that there are a lot of things kind of swirling uh, around me, which is, uh, which, is, which is kind of fun. But really, I'm just excited about the record and having the chance to tour like with, uh, with a full band, which is something I haven't done, uh, haven't done a lot of. So it's been really fun to kind of take it on the road and actually play songs in front of a bunch of people. And it's pretty great, you know? It's like, yeah, this, yeah, this rock star thing is kind of fun. It's like a, it's like a really fun part-time job. I dig it. No bridge that I won't burn. I did, uh, I did most of the record in Minneapolis and uh, recorded at a studio there. But um, uh, my producer Andy Thompson and I, we both have home studios as well, so we'd spend a week working in the studio and then we'd take tracks back and work on them in our, uh, well, in my laundry room. And then uh, I did a week down in, uh, in Atlanta uh, working with the uh, producer by the name Ben Allen to uh, kind of finish up a few tracks. And um, uh, We showed up with uh, most of the tracks already done. Um, but it felt like um, maybe the production style was a little too clean or pristine, and um, Ben had a bunch of really, really great old guitars, and uh, there, was, there was one song in particular, well, the song uh, Ghost, that one didn't feel like it was quite hitting, and then uh, we picked up this old guitar he had, and this was like a, probably like a $100 guitar, a K guitar that he got off of eBay, and I just, you know, we just started strumming it uh, along with the song, and it was like, Yes, like that's the tone we're missing. Apparently, we just didn't have this amazing guitar, and um, he had a bunch of really cool, like old reverbs and things. And it felt like he was just able to kind of dirty up a couple of songs enough that it just made them, it just made them a lot better. The name of the song is I Want to Be Your One Night Stand, and um, I kind of wrote this, I wrote that song in an old-fashioned kind of a way, like the old-fashioned Tin Pan Alley kind of writing where you just have a title, you start with the title, and then you, you write it. Um, at the time, I was uh, I was teaching some songwriting classes at, uh, at a music college uh, in St. Paul, 
And uh, I would come up with all sorts of games that we would play to kind of help us write. And one of the things we would do is uh, we would break off uh, and uh, split the class, and then we would we would just write and write and write and write. Tons and tons of song titles, fill up a list of song titles, and then we would come back after a half hour, read them to you know the class. We would all kind of vote on the ones that we thought were were great. It was actually based off of a. Um, there was an episode of This American Life where they go into the the Onion writing room, and they have a very similar process for picking headlines, and it's kind of a way to you know gauge the fitness of an idea. Um, I think song titles are a good way to gauge the the fitness of a song idea. You know, if it, if your title sounds interesting, you can do pretty well. So, so that was one of mine that uh, uh, got upvoted. I just thought it was funny, and um, and then I started uh, I just started writing it, and it kind of went and you know it starts off in kind of a funny way, and then. Hopefully there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a twist at the end. Oh, we'll get drunk on a box of wine. I, I mean, think I think of all my songs as personal songs. Um, although some are maybe a little more distant or, or kind of disguised, but the core of like why I want to write something is uh, is usually pretty personal, uh, even if the outcomes of the song isn't necessarily. Generally, I, I just I kind of try to open up, let it out, and not really worry about it too much. That's part of the reason why I don't want to talk sometimes about, um, hey, here's where this song came from, is because by setting your own narrative, you know, you're maybe kind of preventing someone else from having their own experience uh, experience with it. So, you know, I've had people come up and offer all sorts of interpretations of, of my tunes over the years, and um, I would say that they're all they're all valid and just as real as the reasons I had when I when I wrote it. So I, I try not to get in the way of people kind of experiencing the songs and record on their own terms and, you know, making it part of their life. You wear that blouse, I'll wear cheap cologne Throw away our wedding bands I want to be your one-night stand Hi, I'm Jeremy Messersmith. Look for me on Last FM. <laughs>